I'm Odin Clack and this is Odin Leather Goods. Here at Odin Leather Goods, we produce all sorts of belts, wallets, bags, satchels, and other personal leather goods for customers who like more of a handmade vibe to the items that they carry. We buy most of our hides from U.S. tanneries. We break them down with a knife where we're cutting them by hand into the different components that we need to make the belts and bags and wallets. Or we use something we call clicker press dies, which is kind of like a big cookie cutter for leather. And once we break it down into shapes, then it's time to start assembly. We'll cut all those pieces together and we'll start a process. Process may include burnishing the edges and then of course stitching some of the internal components together. We've learned how to do this over the last 10 plus years. A lot of trial and error. We use kind of a Western Heritage old school leather crafting techniques here, but we're not necessarily Western. For instance, we don't do a lot of tooled items. We don't do any horse tack and saddlery and things like that, but we're taking the same techniques that those old school makers use to produce their goods and applying them to what we make. I like to call it more of an uptown style instead of a, instead of a rural style. Instead of being trendy, we try to just be classic. We won't make the last bag you ever buy. We will make the last bag that you have to buy, if you want to call it that, right? It's a bag that you can use for many, many years. Odin Leather Goods pretty much started on the corner of my dining room table. Uh, we were going through a time where I was really just overworked. My corporate background is in digital marketing, where I made my money over the last 20 years. But it required me to be online, on the computer, and on Zoom calls, conference calls with folks around the world almost day and night. And it was just really taxing. I really just got tired of it. But I wanted something different where I could work with my hands and be more more creative. So Odin Leather Goods came about one evening when I was really just driving around and I needed to clear my head. I passed by a store and it said Leather Craft on, on a big sign. So I pulled in to the parking lot, walked inside and started walking around looking at all the things I had. It was never my intent to buy any tools. It was never my intent to start working with leather. But once I got inside, saw all the tools, I was kind of um, amazed at what was there. So I bought a few things, like $300 worth of stuff just on a whim, took it home and tried to make something. And the first thing I tried to make was a laptop sleeve. After making that lap laptop sleeve, I thought it was outstanding. I thought it was great greatest thing ever. My wife was very kind. She lied to me. She said it was great too. In hindsight, I don't think it was that great. It wasn't a great piece of artwork at, at all, but I was impressed with it. And I thought, well, if the first one I made looked that good, which it didn't, but whatever. It's still so it's probably back there on the shelf somewhere. My wife tends to keep all my mistakes. So I remember Odin creating a laptop, a bag. It was one of his first bags and he was extremely critical of it. And in my mind, I started thinking, but, but look what you just did. <laughs> My wife was here, she'd tell you that I destroyed her dining room table because it went from being a nice table to being something that was all beat up and crappy. Initially, when Odin started tinkering around with leather, I, thought, I was like, this is kind of cool. But when I saw my dining room table die a slow death, I started thinking, well, at least I'll get some new furniture <laughs> out of this, this project, this hobby. At that point in time, I had no idea it was going to grow into what it has become today. And neither did he. After she got tired of me destroying the table, she finally pushed me out to the garage. And in the garage, I made myself a two foot by four foot workbench with a lamp. And I was really proud of this lamp. And I had a drawer on it, put all my tools in it. So, I mean, this is more space than I'll ever need to, to do leather craft. And I worked at that bench for a few years. That's where old leather came from. It really turned out to be kind of from an experiment to a hobby. And then from a hobby, somewhere along the way, we decided that, you know what, we're selling enough items and we're getting enough requests here that maybe there's something really here for us to work with. Maybe there's something that we can actually grow on. Every time we did a big project, it led to another big project and another big project, and we kept, 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 just kept on growing. Old Leather Goods is a family business. Everyone who works here is like family to us, and my wife has been, played a crucial role in that. I haven't been able to get rid of is this football. There's actually probably three or four of these footballs that we made for the NFL and ESPN a few years ago. They asked us to make some commemorative footballs because they were gonna be here in town uh, filming draft. draft day. And so they called, Look. they said they want footballs. And <laughs> go ahead. When he calls me, he's like, you won't believe this. I just got off the phone with the NFL. Was, That's after with, I- With ESPN. Yeah. And I was like, he said, they want me to make a football. And I said, do you know how to make a football? He said, no, but if the ESPN <laughs> calls and asks you for a football, you say, you hell yeah, and I'll figure it, and you figure it out. Can't be that difficult, right? And so I talked to her that I immediately got in my truck, drove to the sporting goods store and bought two footballs and cut them apart to see if I could make a pattern. And I made it, it didn't look too difficult. Like the first one, <laughs> the pattern made sense. It looked right, it, like in pieces it looked right, but once it was all stitched and put together and the hour it takes to flip it inside out, <laughs> it was almost completely circle. Yeah, it was, it was like around. But it came together, you know, I thought, Probably midway through I made a mistake and I should not have taken the job. For my kids, I think the focus is really getting, getting them to understand that they can do what they want. It's an option for them to have an idea, work really hard to develop an idea into something significant, and then build it into something that they're proud of.